Today we're working on video four from the STEM boot camp. We're going to focus today on solving formulas and algebra review. And really, the main focus of today's video is about uh, identifying a problem that is needing a formula to solve it, and then knowing how to use a formula to plug that in and and manipulate it till you get an answer. So within that, we're going to do a couple things. One, we're going to use density. We're going to describe density because it's a formula that's used a lot in chemistry and physics. Uh, we're going to do a, an algebra review in here today because a lot of times students struggle because they they miss some fundamental things of algebra. And I'm going to just give you a real quick synopsis of how to do algebra. When you look at a problem, you should really always analyze the dimensions. And if the question is looking for how many uh, millimeters or in 4.5 meters, you really are staying within the same dimension. So that's a conversion problem. Same physical dimension. On the other hand, here's an example where switching dimensions. So when that happens, there has to be some scientific explanation or some scientific relationship that's going to relate to different dimensions. All right, so let, let's work on that problem because today we're going to focus on formulas. So look at the dimensions you're given. Here I, I'm given mass. But I'm also given four, so I'm given two dimensions. Know what you're, the dimension you're starting with, and then look for the dimension that you're trying to solve for. In this, you're looking for acceleration. That's step two. And then step three is, okay, what's the, the formula? What's the uh, scientific relationship between these things? F equals ma. Now you can just plug and chug. And what I mean by that is just plug in the things you know, make sure the units make sense, and then solve. Force is... 14 kilograms meters per second squared. Now notice what I do here because this is something I'm going to really try and teach you as you go through this today. Whenever you write down a dimension and it involves two lines, go ahead and put those two lines of division or multiplication in there. In this case, it's kilograms meters per second squared, so it's divided by second squared. Then on the opposite side, in the numerator, you're basically taking mass times acceleration. And you're basically now solving for A. How would you solve for A? Well, if I had to get A by itself, I would, I would get the two kilograms away from it by dividing by the same thing on both sides. Now, here in a minute, we'll go through a little bit of an algebra review to remind you, but let's just get started this way. If I divided both sides by two kilograms, all right, now my kilograms would cancel here, these kilograms would cancel here, and I'm left with units of meters per second squared. And that's nice because that is an acceleration unit. All right? And the math here would say take 14 divided by 2 and you get 7. If the units don't work out, then make sure you convert to units that will cancel out in the correct way. Then do your calculation. All right, now we're going to just work on another formula, density. First off, whenever I, I learn a dimension, for example, density, first thing you should really work on is just putting that in your own words. So the way I think about density, it's how much stuff per given amount of space. The next thing is what is the actual formula. So density is mass divided by volume. And then the next thing is pay attention to the units. Now these could be in different ways, but I, I'm going to just use one example of a density unit. It's in mat, how much stuff, which is grams, per space. So in this case, we're going to describe our space in cubic centimeters, grams per cubic centimeter. Or if you remember what we talked about when we talked about the metric system in a, a previous video, in the metric system, a cubic centimeter is also a mil. So this is also a gram per mil unit. Now here's just a little fact about density, is at standard temperature and pressure, the density of water is about one gram per mil. So for every cubic centimeter of water, or every mil of water, it will mass about one gram, which a gram is about the size of a paper clip. That's how much stuff. The next thing I, I would encourage you to do, if you're learning about a formula and, or a dimension, trying to understand it, how do you apply it? And so here's a couple applications for density. Density is the key to floating. More dense, and what I mean by that is, if the thing that's floating is more dense than the solvent it's floating in, okay, it will sink. Less dense floats. If the object, for example, a hot air balloon, is less dense than the solvent or the air it's floating in, it will rise. So there's one application of density. 
Here's another uh, application of density we use a lot in chemistry, and that is if you know the density of a pure material, it's actually a property that's, that can be used to identify that material. Uh, pay attention to units, know the formula, and kind of know a definition of your that makes sense to you. And that's a good way to learn formulas and dimensions in science. All right, so how, how do you identify material? So here, here's just an example. We're gonna, we're gonna take this magical material here and we're gonna figure out uh, how dense it is. So we need the mass. So we put it on a scale and we see, oh, it's 5.65 grams, awesome. So how do you find the volume? Well, if I can measure this out, and, and this is a three-dimensional object, it's a little hard to see, but if I can measure it out, length, width, and height, um, I could do the proper geometric calculation of volume. But if it's an irregular shaped object or even a regular shaped object, one of the fallback tricks is you can actually place it in water and see how much water it displaces to figure out its volume. So what I'm going to do is do that little trick. So I've got this graduated cylinder that has 50 mils of water in it. Now I'm going to drop, drop that little piece inside the water and the water level is going to raise. And it looked like it raised to 50.50, so the volume of this particular shape is 0.50 mils. So now we have all the pieces of the puzzle. We know it mass is 5.65 grams, and we know that it takes an, a volume of 0.50 mils. So we now use the formula to just plug and chug mass divided by volume. 5.65 divided by 0.50 is 11.3, and look what I do with the units. Whatever units are in the formula, I just that's what the units that are left over in the answer. So it's grams per mil, which is the same thing as a grams per cubic centimeter, thanks to the metric system. So if I look on this table, oh, this is lead. All right, so apparently I got, got the lead out with this problem. So let's just say that the mass per volume of this boat, without even doing the calculation, if we knew the mass per volume of the boat, and in this case it's the mass per volume distributed here, the whole mass, but the volume of, of interest is the volume that's below the water. If the mass per volume of that boat was more than the mass per volume of water, which we just learned is roughly around one, then what would happen? All right, well, the boat would sink. That's one of the applications of density. So now we're going to do another calculation of density. It's just a little silly calculation. This is what I call the centa cow. So basically this cow is about an inch, uh, maybe a little bit over an inch tall. He's um, half an inch wide, 1.23 centimeters wide. And, and it looks like according to the ruler, okay, he's about 3.4 centimeters long in the end. So we're going to just work on the boxy part of this cow and figure out his density. And the question is, will this little miniature cow float or sink? In order to know the density of the cow, we need to know its mass. So we throw this cow on the scale, and it's 2.45, very accurate scale, 2.45 grams is how much this bovine mass is. So now we go and do the calculation. We know the mass, 2.45 grams. We know the volume because we, we're going to just rough it out by saying, look, he's 3.46 centimeters long. He's 2.50 centimeters um, height, just the bulk of his body. And then width-wise, he's 1.23 centimeters. So we're going to just rough this out as a, as a rectangle. So if we do the calculations, you take the grams divided by the volume. And here's a calculation trick. When you do this on your calculator, take this number mass divided by this, 3.46, divided by 2.50, and divide it by 1.23 equals. And that'll save you a little work on your calculator. On the other hand, if you want to use the multiplication, you're going to have to take this number and you divide it by these three numbers in parentheses multiplied together. So one of the things about having two lines of division is it assumes that these whatever's on top and whatever's on bottoms in parentheses. That's what the long line of division is for. And look what happens here. If you look at the units that you're left over with, it's grams divided by centimeters times centimeters times centimeters. That's grams per cubic centimeter. Or according to the metric system, you can call that grams per mil. Anytime you have a cubic centimeter, it's the same as a mil. And here's another way you might write this. Grams times, remember, if you raise it to the negative 3 power, it's the same thing as dividing. So just a reminder back through some of the videos we've seen in, in these uh, boot camp videos. 
So here's our final answer, 0.231 grams per cubic centimeter. So now let's apply this. Here's the centicals density. He's 0.231 grams per cubic centimeter. So now we're, we're asking about the density of water, which we know is about 1. So Senecal is less dense than water. So that means that Senecal should be able to float. There you go. I got him out surfing with the old CCD surf club. So now let's go over here and look at remembering algebra. Whenever you do algebra, what you're really trying to do is um, you're trying to isolate some unknown. You're just trying to solve for some unknown quantity. So I'm going to try and explain algebra to you just in, in, this, in another way. Let's pretend that you have some unknown value x. And we're, we're working on, in this case, the mass of x. So this unknown box has some mass, but we could solve for it. If we had these known masses, they're, they're one gram a piece. So if I put this scale, this is just a balanced scale, and I set it up so that it's exactly balanced by putting distributing ones on both sides, and here's what I find out. x plus 2 is exactly balanced with five of these. So that's, that's the scale, and here's what you'd say mathematically. x plus 2 equals 5. That's what equals means. It means it's balanced. It's exactly the same. So now, if I knew this situation here, I could intuitively figure out how to get back to what the x weighs. I could just take two of those off on this side and also take two of those off on that side, and then I'd have the answer. So what did I do mathematically? I subtracted this two from this side, and I subtracted this two on this side. So in algebra, what you do is if you have an unknown, and you look what mathematical operation is being done between that unknown and the number, do the opposite operation to both sides. So I subtract 2 from both sides, and I'm left with x equals 3. And that's what we did here. So the key to algebra is do equivalent operations to both sides of the equation until you finally isolate the unknown as we do this. Okay, here's another problem. This, this is kind of multiplication division in algebra. Same concept. Look, if I had a balance, and I, I had two of these unknown x's, and they balanced out with exactly six things. That's the physical picture. Here's the mathematical picture. I'm saying, look, I have two x's. Two times x means two x's. That's what multiplication means. It's equal to six. Now, think about what I could do here. If I needed to just figure out what one of these x's weighed, right, I could just cut this in half, and that should still be true if I cut this in half, right? Cut that in half, cut that in half, oh, x equals 3. But think back to how we're doing that numerically. The operation between 2 and x is multiplication. The opposite of multiplication is division, so do the opposite. And that would be true as long as you do the opposite to both sides of the equation. That's what we did up here, right? So I'm going to divide by 2. That's fine. As long as I divide by 2 on this side, it's still true. Collect my terms, right? That The 2's cancel out and go to the number 1. And that leaves 3 on the other side. So opposite operations on both sides. Opposite to both sides. So if I have this, let's just kind of review through this. If I have x over 4 equals 5, what's the opposite operation? Well, what's being done here and here? It's division, the opposite of division, multiplication. Do the same multiplication to both sides. The number 4 should go away, and I'm left with x equals 20. So now, now we're using power. What is the opposite operation of a power? Well, the opposite operation of a power is a root. So it's the second power. The opposite operation is the second root. As long as I do the same to both sides, take the square root, as long as I do the same to both sides, it should be true. Um, take the second root of the second power, it's going to leave x behind. And the second root of 25 is 5. So here's another problem. Taking the third root of that, the opposite of taking the root is the power. So now I'm going to raise both sides to the third power. x falls out on this side. And 27 times 27 times 27 comes out as 19,683. Here's another problem. What if I took the log of x equals minus 4? So now what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to do the opposite to both sides. Well, the opposite of taking the log is raising something to the power of 10. Now I'm going to solve x will fall out. And then this looks familiar. It's 1 over 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. So we just move the decimal over 1, 2, 3, 4 times. That's the answer. So this, this covers all of it. It doesn't matter whether it's addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, roots, or powers. Do the opposite. And as long as you do them to both sides, it's still true. And that basically is algebra. OK, here's another um, algebra concept. Does it matter whether it's left or right? In other words, if I say x plus 2 equals 5, does it matter if I change this over on the scale and said, OK, 5 equals x plus 2? These are the same. You can exchange. You can trade sides if that just makes you more comfortable. In other words, if I started on this side, some people might not like that. They want the x to be on the left. As long as you change both sides over, that, that's fine. Once again, what's driving me to make these decisions? Is it still true? All right. What about when the variable's on the bottom? And just to get to this answer, let me remind you of something. If I had 16 over 4 equals 4 over 1, 16 over 4 is 4, and 4 divided by 1 is 4. So this is still true. Does it matter if I flip both sides? Let's see if it's still true. 4 sixteenths is 1 quarter. So this is still true. By the way, it's not the same numbers. This is 4 equals 4. This is 0.25 equals 0.25. It's just that it's still true. So here's what you learn. If you have something on the bottom, it's OK to take your whole expression as fractions and flip both sides. And this is what that, this little example shows you. But now the question is, OK, you can flip, but why? Well, here's kind of the example. If I flip this over and solve for x, now I can go back to what I just learned. Look, the opposite of dividing is multiply. I multiply both sides by 6. And then this will go away and go to, this will go to 1. And I can work this out. 6 times 2 is 12 divided by 3 is 4. OK, how does this apply to my science? Why am I learning this in, in a kind of a boot camp for chemistry and physics? Well, let's just say you have an object with a density of 5 grams per mil and has a mass of 20 grams. What volume does it occupy? So here's where we're going to use our formula. Density is mass per volume. We're going to just plug and chug. Density is 5 grams per mil equals mass, 20 grams, divided by volume. Now we're going to solve for V. Here's what we're after, but it's on the denominator, not the numerator. We need to solve it as a numerator. Well, we just learned some tricks to this. One of them is you can flip both sides. right? You can rewrite it flipped on both sides. Back where we, we had just flipped both sides. Now what we're going to do is switch sides. As you do more and more of this, you might just be comfortable solving for V on the right-hand side. It doesn't make it less right, kind of a matter of what you're comfortable with. Now at this point, this is divided by 20 grams. If I want to get the V by itself, do the opposite of both sides. To multiply through by 20 grams. And look what happens to the units. They cancel out nicely. That should guide you and leave behind the units you're looking for. So this is volume units. That's perfect. This goes to 1. 20 divided by 5 equals 4 mils. OK, algebra with fractions. This is another area where sometimes students have a hard time. The first thing I tell you is that fractions really mean divide. So really what we're saying is 3x divided by 4. That means the same thing. 3 quarters x, 3x divided by 4, same thing. But the real question is, how do you get x by itself? Well, it's being multiplied by a fraction. Well, what's the opposite of multiplying by a fraction? Dividing by a fraction. And if I divide by 3 quarters on both sides, right, this is easy enough because this cancels, goes to 1. But I'm left with this kind of odd little 9 divided by 3 divided by 4. And here's something I would. I would encourage you to do. Get used to getting these things into two lines of division. That's one of the keys. And the way to do that is remember, whenever you divide by fractions, you invert and multiply. It does the same thing. That goes to 1. And 9 times 4 divided by 3 is 12. Try and keep the operations in two lines. OK, what about these scenarios? OK, now it looks like I've got three lines of division. Well, right here, I've got three lines of division. 
Well, one of the tricks is this. If you have an, a number, a whole number, it can be expressed as a fraction by putting in over one. Now you're back to familiar territory. Okay, dividing fractions, invert and multiply. Dividing fractions, invert and multiply. There you go. Now this is nine times four divided by three. That's easy enough to work out. Invert and multiply. 12 divided by three divided by five. It's about 0.8. And here's another thing, just like I, I, I would get you used to working on, anything on a numerator is multiplied, anything on a denominator is divided. So 12 divided by 3 divided by 5. Or you could go 12 divided by 5 divided by 3. These are commutative, so it doesn't matter what order you do those in. Now let's apply this to working formulas with chemistry and physics. So we're going to... We're going to teach you a new formula. This we're not going to delve into it like density. We're just going to give you one. Just this is a good physics expression. Mass times velocity will give you momentum. So if we rearrange that, speed is momentum divided by mass. And it's asking how fast speed is a 15 kilogram vehicle traveling. Okay, that's mass, right? To have a momentum of 45 kilogram meter seconds. Okay, that's a momentum unit. There's the um, formula, but look, it's 45 kilogram meter seconds, so it's, I put it in two lines, and now I'm going to divide it by the mass again. Now do you see something looking familiar? That's three lines of division. Let's get it into two, right? This could be re-expressed as over one. This is now a fraction. Here's the top fraction. Here's the bottom fraction. Invert and multiply. So now when I invert and multiply, now I can solve this thing. Look what happens to the units. Kilograms cancel, and I'm left with meters per second, which is great because that's the speed. And I take 45 by 15, that gives me 3. So just a reminder, whenever you have these um, fractions and one is not a fraction, put it over 1. Try and express these things in just two lines. Anytime you see division, invert and multiply. That'll just clean up your math. And anytime your units... Um, are working correctly, they'll cancel. And if not, convert them. In other words, if this had been grams and this had been kilograms, then convert it before you do the problem. All right, here we go. Back to density. We're going to do a little bit of practice. How many liters will 21 grams of fluid that has a density of 7 grams per mil occupy? So now I have the mass of the fluid. I'm trying to figure out what space it's going to occupy. And I'm, the way I'm going to connect that is and, and once again, here's my heads up. Oh, I need a formula because this is a dimension of mass. This is a dimension of uh, density. I'm looking for volume. So these are all three different dimensions. The only way to connect them is if you know a formula that relates to three, which is right here. That's the definition of density, mass per volume. Okay. There's the relationship, plug and chug. So I put density equals mass divided by volume, but I'm trying to solve for V. So now do you go back to what we just talked about with algebra. V's on the bottom. I need it on top. I need it as a numerator. Flip both sides and exchange if you want. Now it's getting a lot easier to see. Oh, okay, I'm going to just solve for this. It's being divided. Do the same to both sides. All right, things are going to cancel out nicely. I'm going to be left with the units I want, which is mils, which is great, okay? 21 by 7 is 3. Answer is 3 milliliters. Okay, in this slide, I just want to show you one little caveat to really watch for. When you're operating on an equation, just like we talked about, it's okay to flip and exchange sides as long as you do the, bo the same thing to both sides. If you flip over here on the, on the right-hand side of the equation, that's okay as long as you flip on the left-hand side of, of the equation, and you can then exchange both sides, and that's, that's fine. But let me uh, look at another case where you're actually doing a conversion. For example, let's convert 3 mils to a liter. And let's just say the first step that I did was I put my 3 mils in there, and then I took my conversion factor. We did this on the last video. So now what I, what I have here is I'm not canceling my units correctly, so what I need to do is I need to flip that conversion factor. 
Okay, now this is correct. Now look what I did here. I flipped an equation, I, and I multiplied by an equation, but I didn't do it the same to both sides. Why is that? Why is that different? Well, in this particular case, this is a ratio that really represents one. It's a conversion factor. And when you do a, a conversion fa factor, it really is like multiplying by one, so you don't have to do that to both sides. So it's a very subtle thing, but just pay attention whenever you're doing a conversion. It's okay to string on conversions without having to do the same to both sides. And this is, that's different than actually operating on an equation to isolate a variable. So kind of pay attention, maybe do these two problems a couple times and think about it and see how it's slightly different. And remember that as you're working through different problems. Now I'm going to give you a chance to work on some problems. What I'd like for you to do at this point is stop your video, um, write down these problems, see if you can solve them, use all these little rules we've worked on and uh, practice your algebra and see if you can solve for these two problems. Okay, let's see how you did. Number one, what volume would 3.5 times 10 to the fourth grams of gasoline occupy if the density of gas is 0.771 kilograms per liter? Well, once again, we're trying to relate volume um, to mass, so the, the relationship has to be through density, so there's your formula. But look at the problem right now. I've got a mass of grams, and I've got a density in terms of kilograms, so the first thing I gotta do is I gotta do a conversion. And it doesn't matter which way you go, but I've chosen to take the um, 0.771 kilograms and change it into grams, and this is straight from uh, last video where we did conversions. Okay, so now I'm gonna rewrite the problem using this grams. So here's the density. Remember, we write it in two lines. Equals mass divided by volume. Now we're gonna solve for V. Flip, right? Flip both sides of the equation. That should be right. Solve for V. In this case, you're dividing by uh, 3.5 times 10 to the fourth grams to V, so you can do the opposite, which is multiply by that. Do it, as long as you do it to both sides, it's still true. That's gonna cancel that out. And you're gonna get an answer of 45.4 liters when I take this number divided by that number. And look what happens to my units here. The grams are gone, I'm left with liters. Okay, second problem. Force is mass times acceleration. So I actually tell you the mathematical relationship. Grade your ma, ma, she gets an F. When a mass is pushed with the force of this many kilograms meters per second squared, it is accelerated to a, a 185 meters per second per second. How big, what's the mass of that object? So here's the formula. I'm gonna plug and chug, okay? I know the force, it's given to me, right there. Plug that in, leave it in two lines. I'm gonna equals, gonna solve for m, that's the unknown, I don't know how big the object is. I'm gonna multiply it by the acceleration, that's given to me. So now all I have to do is get m by itself. Well, what's being done with the m? It's being multiplied by a fraction. So how do you undo a fraction? You divide by both sides, which means invert and multiply, right? Invert and multiply on both sides. Do the same to both sides. My units cancel out nicely. Meters should go away, seconds should go away. This goes to one. Then you look over here, and I'm left with mass in kilograms. And the mass says take 6.7 times 10 to the fourth divided by 185. And I get 3.6 times 10 to the 2 kilograms. So I hope this has helped to remind you about how to do a little algebra and also how to solve for formulas. And that concludes the boot camp videos that can be used for all the STEM fields.